kids, you wanna you wanna buy a little YouTube video? Hey? You wanna buy some Final Fantasy 14? Hey? I'm going back to the van. I got this van the alley. I got some Final Fantasy 14 for you. Audio's working today. So let's go. Uh, continuing the Gridanian storyline. I'm right outside the basically the conjurer's place. And I believe I described this uh, yesterday, but you're walking down a little bit downhill, down a path with about somewhere be varying between four and six feet high, kind of cliff walls on either side. A well-worn path. And then it leads to a pond. And at the back of this pond is a three-tiered waterfall. First waterfall is probably about four feet high. The next one's maybe like five or six feet high. And the last one is 10 to 12 feet high. And they're distance from it from themselves roughly 40 to 60 feet 60 uh, feet yards maybe 40 to 60 yards each we're speaking with Kane Senna and she might talk nope thank you for hearing me out we're actually gonna see are we gonna be okay yep cutscene I have written a letter to my counterparts in the Eorzean Alliance I remember her voice is a tiny bit deep. I think I'm doing right. The, ba <clears throat> the Battle of Cartano and the calamity that followed claimed countless souls and left countless more bereft and alone. In the dark days that followed, many were the survivors who thought themselves less fortunate than the dead. Five years have come and gone, but the land and the people still bear the wounds of the devastation. Nor are we any closer to learning the fate of the Warriors of Light. Yet so long as we live, never must we give up hope. We owe this to those who laid down their lives that we might behold another dawn. In remembrance of them, a memorial service will soon be held upon the anniversary of the Battle of Cartano. This missive bears the details of that service. You graciously accepted the part of emissary in the recent ceremony. Should you be so willing, I would now make you my envoy. Envoy, however you pronounce that. And have you bear my message to our allies. Your dedication to the people of Gridania rouses fond memories in me, and I would choose no other role for no no other for the role. Will you do me this favor? You nod your head. Humbly, I thank you. As you are no doubt aware, our partners in the Orzean Alliance lie some considerable distance away, nor are Olda and Lim Limsa Lominsa close to one another. Yet fear not, for I have no intention of subjecting you, mine own newly anointed envoy, to a journey which would take weeks by land. Like in Final Fantasy XI, the first time you have to travel to these foreign cities, you walk. And if you're doing it at a low level, it's a dangerous walk. Because, <laughs> like, if you want to do it around... Oh, I can't remember... There's a reason to go at level 20, because at level 20, if you go to Juno, you can get your Chocobo license. Um, so there's a good reason there. But at level 20, you are in danger for at least half of the journey. <laughs> but anyway. No, I mean for you to travel by air. Receive of me this airship pass. With it, you may make use of the skyways that connect the three city-states of the Alliance. You look, you look astounded and surprised. The airship landing is situated upon the lower floor of the carline canopy. Simply show your pass, and you will be admitted to the departure area. Before you embark upon your journey, however, you would do well to seek the worldly wisdom of Miun. Few forest-born Gridanians know more of the lands beyond the Twelve's Wood than she. In better times, airships were available for the convenience of one and all. Alas, the risk that our crafts may fall to Imperial attack has forced a reduction in the number of flights. Consequently, it has become necessary to restrict air travel only to those whose need is great. Such individuals may petition the relevant parties to be issued an airship pass. As you may have deduced, I myself am one such am one such party. I will admit a lot of my airship use in this game has not been of the most important. But I mean, I'm also fighting the good fight always, so maybe I'm important. 
Yet I was not alone in desiring that you be granted the privilege of air travel. Such is the, such is the potential you show. We have no doubt but, but that you will reward our faith in you, Mercy. By the power vested in me, I bid you journey forth as my envoy into the great realm of Eorzea. Walk her fields, brave her seas, and strive to know her better. And where, wheresoever you go, go without fear, for the path shall ever be revealed to those who are true of heart. Guided by the crystal's light, set forth and discover your destiny. Yes, ma'am. Oh, you don't have to, you don't even have to walk on the path in the pond. It's that shallow. What a beautiful, serene area. I could I could sit there and, and look at the, the waterfalls, the triple waterfalls all day. Like I mentioned in the previous video, I love myself some waterfalls. Um, I do want to be a conjurer at some point. I do think that I'm just going to focus on the storyline and just suffer the long queue times for DPS and in the dungeons ahead. But uh, let's teleport over to Meereen to use the Aether Ethernet. And then run down here. You could also become a carpenter in Gridania. I believe leather worker and archer. I think that's it. I think it's leather working, carpentry. Oh, um, they have the botanist too. Just you know, picking picking flowers and it's more. It, you pick flowers, you pick herbs, you um, cut wood. Um, here, you chop wood. Oh no, I need to talk to me. And I I I, psh, I got distracted. I distracted myself. Miyun, I'm sorry. I mean to skip you. I love you. You're pretty. You're nice. Cutscene, fade to black. Tis good to see you up and about again, Mercy. Tell me, did you pay the Elder Street Seer a visit as I bid? Appointed personal envoy? She claps for you. Everybody in the bar just looks like, what? And now you are to bear the Elder Seed Seer's missive to our ally. Well, it seems you've made an impression on the great woman. I can't argue with her judgment, though. You've earned this honor with tireless hard work, and anyone who says you don't deserve it had better not do so in my hearing. I find myself praising you often of late, but Mother is truly proud of you. Short of a warrior of light, I can imagine no better adventurer to represent us, and that, my girl, is some compliment. You look pleased by this. But I've flattered you enough for one day, and I don't want your head to get too big, or you'll struggle to lug it around the realm. Speaking of which, Eorzea is a big old place. Now that you have an airship pass, you can really start to broaden your horizons. The sky's quite literally the limit. Even if your errand didn't call for it, I would strongly suggest visiting the two other city-states of the Alliance before you go anywhere else. They are, of course, Limsa Lominsa, the city of pirates, and Ulda, the jewel of the desert. Once you've acquainted yourself with them, you can turn your sights on whichever lesser-trodden region takes your fancy. The Calamity changed the face of Eorzea, and much of her now lies in shadow, beyond man's ken. It's a veritable playground for a wide-eyed adventurer like your good self. Mind you, it won't be all fun and games. Each nation faces its fair share of problems, from internal strife to conflict with the beast tribes and their primals, so don't be too surprised if you find yourself embroiled in the odd, unsavory situation on your travels. But no matter what difficulties you encounter, I am confident that you will pull through and emerge the stronger for the experience. These are interesting times for yours, Yeah, Mercy. It's been five years now since the Calamity, but folk are beginning to be are finally beginning to look to the future. A period of great change is upon us, and you have a part to play in it. And if you and if that prospect doesn't excite you, I don't know what will. I'm chomping at the bit. Let me go, let me go, let me go, let me go right now. I got a free company invite from Tattoo Baby for Fairy Tale Academia. Eh. 
I like the name. Sure. Not bad. Not the best. I hope they never see this, because it's weird. What did we just say? Oh, hold on. Sorry. Let me talk to you again. Greetings, good madam. This is the reservation counter for Lim Salamensa bound flights. Uh, no, it's actually ghost everywhere, but for now, I guess it's just Lim Salamensa. Oh, are you not Mercy Valkyr, the Elder Seed, Seal's per Seed Seer's personal envoy? We at the Highwind Skyways are honored to serve you. Will you be flying with us today? Yes. Yes, my lord. This is also the only time you'll ever see like the back channels of of um, the airship kind of landing thing. You never come to this. Ah, uh, well. You might come during a mission at some other point in time. I don't remember for sure. But anyway, you kind of run down one ramp and you take a U-turn. You run along a um, an even ramp over to a gangplank that leads up into an airship, which looks kind of like a boat with a canopy on top and a big old balloon on top of the canopy. Let's let's click this glittering gangplank to see what happens. Board the airship. Most of the time we will also skip this animation. But for this first time, you see people kind of coming and going from the airship and not a whole lot. Attention, all passengers. The airship bound for Limsa Lamenso is about to depart. Please make your way to the boarding gate. You see the fan starts in the back of the airship. You board... Not that it matters, but the only other person on board is the pilot. He's at the uh, the old-fashioned kind of ship's wheel. And the airship takes off. It's basically just a fan. The ball on top that is, in theory, the balloon is, like, rolling to one side. As you depart... Uh, Papa Limo, Ida, Yoon, um, uh, what's his name? The, uh, the archer man who is like the leader of the archers, Le Levin, Yuen, Le Lewin, Lewin, uh, Lewin, I think. He and some wood whalers and some archers and, um, lancers come to bid you farewell. One day, minstrels will sing of your deeds. May you ever walk in the light of the crystal, says Yoon. And your airship takes off. It's floating over treetops into the bright blue sky with nice wispy white clouds. And you see a cutscene of another ship in the title Castrum Occidens. Occidens. And this is a more mechanical looking ship with a red top, white on it as well, ram rose from the ship uh, after it lands. And down it walks a man in, a menacing man in black boots and red and black armor and the, his horns off the side on his armor. And you can't see any faces here, but he's accompanied by some other menacing looking. It has been 15 years, but the bitter taste of defeat lingers still. I don't know what dragon they talk about defeating there, but the one that took down their massive, Eorzea, theoretically... a blighted realm, riddled with false gods. 
theoretically unsinkable airship took it down and was still quite thriving and it was like one of those really long dragons with a you know big dragon head but you know, little wings it you know shouldn't be able to fly kind of thing but it you know, weaves through the air like a snake basically but it wrapped itself around the giant airship and squeezed it and took it down twice now it has eluded the empire's grasp for all the destruction it wrought even Meteor, the Great Sin, failed to yield us control over it. And for this failure, the realm has sunk deeper into depravity. It is twisted beyond all reckoning, rotten nigh to the core. Yet, it must be saved. Only Garlean rule can bring order to Eorzea. It falls to us to deliver the misguided masses from their ignorance. We are of one mind, Lord Van Balvar. Those that are speaking to him right now are on. There's three of them. They're all. On, they're all on one knee, bowed to uh, Lord Van Balsar. You have a womanly figure in almost completely white armor with little some black patches on the arms and neck. Um, she has, but it's like, it's glory. Like all these are really high tech looking armors. Um, she has what looks like a gun sword on one arm and that's all I can see. Um, in the middle is a basically fully red armored with some black arm and neck stuff. Um, kind of looks more dragonish in his armor. Uh, like the head is more dragonish. I uh, can't see any weapons on him. And then the last guy is bigger, thicker. Um, all black armored and he seems to have like shields on his arms that also have some kind of uh, uh, pneumatic like um, like if he were to hit somebody with with the uh, with the shield pointing at them like not like the broad side of the shield but if he were to thrust the shield like with his arms straight at them and hit them with the, the like the pointy end of the shield it would also make something come out of that the front of it that that part like there's some kind of gun on it or something like that. and his black helmet has kind of curved horns out towards the front and now we see another ship being kind of floated in that looks kind of like a a thick Senior dragon engineers please report to magnetic research following scheduled inspection like a, a cannon of sorts maybe and now there's a bunch of hey is the legatus really planning to take another tilt at the orsia there's a bunch of people saluting as ships come down and you are you're, you're seeing a scene of two just engineer looking fellas in robes and and goggles and whatnot and one of them's talking hey what hole have you been hiding in we're in the midst of preparing for a new campaign and a huge one at that. But I thought the Emperor had given up the Western lands for lost after Cartano. What could the Legatus possibly hope to gain by acting alone? I sense you harbor certain doubts over the wisdom of the Legatus's plan. And then the red armored man walks up behind them. His mask is off, and he has blonde. Ah, uh, my, my lord! Blonde hair that kind of goes up maybe a few inches and then back. Um, yeah. Please call me Nero. Tell me, where were you born? He seems to have a long sword on his back with a red handle. Othard, my lord. Alamigo, my lord. Ah, codename Hummingway, I presume. He also has a gemstone on his I, I don't know what you... Don't know why. Silence. Your denials will not change your fate. I assure you, Frumentarium sees all. I don't know who Frumentarium is, and I, I don't know if we'll ever know, but maybe if I pay good attention, we will. <laughs> 
strikes down in one blow with his long sword the would-be codenamed Hemingway, Hummingbird, whatever. Hummingbird. Clean up this mess and do not miss any, or I shall be most displeased. At, 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 at once, my lord. He puts back on his red kind of dragony. Armor. Garland. Soon you will be made to know the true power of Magitech. Hey, I put my helmet back on. It's on me. I'm a springfield sight. Hope this one is over soon. Cause I wanna make another thing. You land um, at a tower, kind of tallish tower, white buildings, and everybody here is wearing yellow armor, and they have two-handed axes. So far, that's all I see. Let us find, and the, um, there's white brick, I would say, I guess, everywhere. It's, it's almost as if this is built out of like a tall, a tall standing like um, spire of like actual rock formation, and you're at a an airship entryway. And where is? Oh, I got to have to the arrivals place and everything. Here. What you're walking on is either wood, but it's mostly stone, stone square, stoned floors. You know, arrivals attendant. Ah, you must be the envoy from Gridania. Welcome to Limsa Minsa, my lady. Admiral B-L-O-E-F-H-I-S-W-Y-N. <laughs> Blofiswin. That's actually probably the best I've ever pronounced it. Blof Blofiswin. Awaits your arrival. <laughs> and awaiting for you as well is a Storm Honor Guard wearing all red. You are the Gridanian envoy? Welcome to Limsa Lominsa. The Admiral has been looking forward to your arrival. Please proceed to the Crow's Lift at your earliest convenience. It will take you to Bulwark Hall. Once there, pray speak with Xantheo. He will be pleased to show you in to the Admiral's command room on the bridge. Okay. Um... Yeah... Well, no, I'll do that later. I'll do that after the video. Uh, I don't, I don't, nobody needs to see how all the pudding is made or whatever, but I do not know how to get up there. So I need to take, shoot, let's do the other one here, Bullock Hall. There we go. I'm going to go around and get all the Aethernet um, crystals in a minute. Santhael, the Storm Sergeant. Greetings, madam, and welcome to our fair city. If you would permit me to examine the seal on the missive you carry. Yes, everything seems to be in order. My apologies. We cannot afford to be complacent, you understand. Please, step this way. Cut to black. Cutscene. Enter. Yeah, I don't have to voice it. You've entered uh, an office with a great view of the port city. And I did the... not expect the Gridanian envoy to be an adventurer. It speaks highly of your character that the elder Seedseer would choose an outsider to represent her nation's interests. This is the silver-haired lady with the black armor, leathery kind of armor that uh, was in the flashback with uh, Kane Senna and then a couple other generals. This way. She has I bid you welcome a couple other I would assume higher high-ranking officials with her one is a man that looks like he's in a mostly pirate garb and then the other is a bigger um, I think they're Rogadin is what they are called they're Galka in Final Fantasy 11 but um, he's in kind of red blue and white actually kind of armor but like kind of Admiral um, if you were to think of what naval captains might look like now or not now but um 
I guess British can eh, whatever. Picture what you want, but red, red, white, and blue, but mostly red. And he's got goggles. I am Melvi Blufisvin, Admiral of Limso Lominsa, and Commander of the Maelstrom. Blufisvin. Now, what news from the Black Shroud? Fade to black as you would presumably tell her. Hmm. A memorial service to honor the fallen. That's the best I can do for her voice. Seven hells. Has it been five years? Five years since the Galian Empire sought to wrest Eorzea from our grasp. It was an answer to the imperial threat that the city-states formed the Grand Companies and forged the Eorzean Alliance anew. But Garlemald was not content to wager all on a simple contest of martial might. They had other plans. The Meteor Project. Legatus Nail of Andarnus, hells take him, intended to cleanse our realm by snatching the lesser moon Dalamud from the heavens and casting it down upon our heads. Desperate to prevent this lunatic scheme, we marched our forces to the Cartano Flats and there met the uh, Seventh Imperial Legion in battle. Never have I seen a fight like the Battle of Cartano, and I have seen full many. But, thought, but though we gave no quarter, spared not one ounce of effort, we could not prevent what followed. From inside the shell of Dalamud came a winged nightmare, the dragon of the size of a bloody city. T'was the elder primal Bahamut, bent on making an eighth, an eighth hell of Eorzea. In the, sp in the space of a breath, the legions of the Empire were set aflame, while our own armies fared little better. T'was as if the whole world was burning. Words cannot well describe the scene. And yet, by some miracle, a few among us were spared. Even as I steeled myself for death, a blinding white light enveloped me, robbing me of my senses. When I regained them, the dragon was gone, and the still smoldering land was warped beyond all knowing. Were, were, were Archon Louisois still with us, he would doubtless shed some light on these unfathomable happenings. Alas, he is not and I fear we will want for his wisdom in the days to come. For while our nation struggled to recover from the devastation, the beastmen call forth their damned primals to torment us anew. Unless we put aside our differences and rebuild now, our foes will catch us unprepared. And I speak not only of the beastmen. Do not imagine that the Empire has forsaken its claim on Eorzea. The Imperials crowd our borders, waiting to strike. Damn it all, we need champions to replace those we lost. But such thoughts are worse than worthless. Time is short, and we and none will save us, save ourselves. It is the duty of every soul who survived the calamity to work together for the good of Eorzea, and this memorial service may be the very thing to unite us. I, Kane Senna, has the right of it. I accept her proposal. She signed something. In theory, the document you brought to her about the ceremonies and hands it to the, the big red armored dude who puts it away I guess oh he might be taking it himself that's, you know, that's a good touch your duty is done here adventurer I will see to it that the elder seed seer receives my reply you travel next to Uldar yes you nod pray give my regards to general Rabon oh and tell him it, the wolf has been sniffing around the stables a private jest, and one in poor taste, but I would have you tell it all the same. She smiles. Fare you well, Mercy. May the navigator guide you on your journey. I am going to pick this up in the next video. It is almost half an hour on this one so far, so it's a good, a good place to stop in my opinion. Going to pick up some Ethernet shards after this, and then I'll actually do the Ulda portion and record that. And that should be, I might be all I do today, but we'll see. Ta-ta for now.